see how he, he exposed the their lives. James tribe is Christ. Should I show you? Let's get Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. Let's get Hebrews 7 and 14. No? Let's, let's do it. I'm not worried about cars. They can go around. Let's see where Christ is from. This is Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of what? Out of Judah. Of which tribe Moses spake, nothing concerning priesthood. So if Jesus came from Judah, let's find out what the color of Jesus is. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. You know what color he is? You know the Bible says what, what skin color he is? I've never researched. Because you're talking about Jesus over here in my neighborhood, but you don't even know what tribe he came from and what skin color he is. This is Revelation 1 and 14. His head and his hairs were white at, like wool. Do you got woolly hair? No? White, white like wool, white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet, now it says his feet. If it's about to give the description of his feet, it's obviously the same color of his entire body, right? Let's see. His feet like unto fine brass. What's the color of brass? Uh, it's like, you don't know what the color, what color is a penny? Like a brownish, right? I don't know, yeah, brown. Right, like brown as if they burned in the furnace. So he was so brown, he looked like he burned in the furnace. So you put anything in the fire, what, turn is it, what color is it gonna turn? Black, right? If I, if I put rice and I burn rice, it's gonna turn what? Black, right? Yeah. Right? If you put your, your bicycle, you know what I'm saying, in the fire, it's gonna turn what? Black, man, right? So they got this picture going around, right? You guys are what? Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Yeah. Right? But you didn't know that Jesus Christ was an Israelite, right? So, did you know that the saints are Israelites? Do you know who the Israelites are based on biblical prophecy and Deuteronomy? What's the definition? See, the whole Bible is about the Israelites. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They are the Israelites the Bible What's speaks the of. So you to be walking around here from saying the church of Jesus Christ, but you don't even know the color of Jesus Christ, what tribe he came from, who this Bible is for, then you just teaching lies, just like you were teaching lies to my people across the street. See, what you do is you come to the hood thinking that we don't know these scriptures. Nah, I live over here. This is about the fourth time I done dealt with y'all, and yet y'all still can't come with no truth. So with that, let's determine, right, who the Israelites are, because it's based on Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's see if your people fit these curses. 5K right? likes the part two. Because this is our we history book. that God accepts all of this. So God accepts all. Through. Let's find out. Romans 9 and 13. Let's see how he... Shalom, man. Call Lamla, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, the children of the promise. So the thing that strikes me is very, very powerful is that when you look at this awakening, the Most High timed this thing in its precision, <coughs> very precise, how he waited to the acceptable time, when time is just right. Remember, the Bible says he does not stir or, let's, let's get that. So everything is measured out in its perfection. And the Most High does not move nor stir them. We'll go ahead and get it. Second Ezra 4. Let's go to verse 4. Thirty-seven. Let's go to thirty-six. And unto these things, Uriel the archangel gave them answer and said, "Even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for he hath weighed the world 
in the balance. So there is a set number, a set elect that's being meted out that's fit for the master's use. A said number of Zion is being fulfilled. So the thing that strikes me as amazing is we've had the same words of the Most High for a couple of thousand years. But now, in this current time and sequence, we're waking up to who we are, coming back to remembrance. So this thing is timed out in its precision. <coughs> Let's read verse 37. By measure, heavy measure the times, and by number, heavy number the times, and he doth not move nor stir them until the said measure be fulfilled. So the Most High is a perfectionist. When the time is right, the cake comes out of the oven. When the time is right, the turkey is released from bondage, from the heat of adversity. In the acceptable time, let's go to Psalms 69 and 13. <clears throat> the book of Psalms, chapter 69, verse 13. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. So the Most High moves on his timeline. There's an old folk saying, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. That still holds true to, to this day. <clears throat> One moment, water break. So the Israelites are waking up in the prescribed time. The seals have been released, broken by Yahushai. See, deliver me out of the mire and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of the deep waters. So the floods, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. <clears throat> so this is on the father's timeline, not man's. Let's go back to something. Something stood out to me. Of course, I can't find it. One moment. Second Ezra 4, verse 36. And unto these things Uriel, the archangel, gave them answer and said, even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for he hath weighed the world in the balance. What seed? The seeds of the promise. The seed of promise, which starts with the elect. Those seeds. Fill up thy number, O Zion. See, let's go from there. I don't want to go here yet. Right here. See? Galatians 4, verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac, 
was, are the children of promise. Those are the seeds of the Lord's measurement that's being weighed in the balance, sifted out and preserved for the harvest, which is the end of the world. So who is Isaac? Yahweh Shai. Remember, he had to walk in the flesh. He had to be tested, tempted in the flesh. He had to conquer death by walking that test and trial of his faith in the flesh. So that seed starts with Yahweh Shai. He is the son of Abraham and the son of David. Let's go to verse 27. Galatians 4, verse 27. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren, that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate have many more children than she which have a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh, him, let's go to verse 29. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him, that was born after the spirit. Even so, it is now. So Esau is born after the flesh, just like Cain was. So Cain persecuted Abel, and Esau persecuted Jacob. So the promised seed is through the house of David, under the chosen elect of Jacob, the Israelites. <coughs> Let's go back to verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Let's go to Hebrews 2 and 16. I think I have it up right here. <clears throat> Start reading it around. Right here, let's go to verse 14. The book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So death is going to be swallowed up in victory, which it is now, because it's already prescribed, pre-written, ordained to fill the will of the Father, Bible prophecy. So Esau is going to be defeated. And literal death is going to be conquered. So the children of the promise are promised what? Eternal life. <clears throat> Let's go to Romans 9. Let's go to verse 2. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So this is a bloodline, a promised seed. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the
covenant and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Old and New Testament is to the Israelites, which start with the elect. And the adoption being grafted back in to our own olive tree. The Israelites, northern kingdom, Israel, southern kingdom of Judah. And the glory getting fame and praise in all the lands where we've been put to shame. And the promises eternal life, inheriting the gift of the reward of the kingdom of heaven forever. Remember Isaiah 45, verse 17. Israel is a world without end. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. So that world is the cosmos, orderly arrangement or government under the tabernacle of David. Elect. Or verse 5. Romans 9, verse 5. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came, who is over all, God bless forever. My mind. Now, when you read verse 4, the service of God, the true prophets, pastors, teachers, and apostles are Israelites. There's no other prophet in any other nation of people but under the sons of Jacob. Bloodline. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. So there is an elect of the nation of Israel. And you have an elect of the elect. The governors, verse 7, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So Yahweh Shai is that root and offspring of David. He is the key that came on the earth as Isaac. Let's go back. See? Hebrews 2, verse 15. And deliver them who, through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham, that's Isaac, who was chosen, the only begotten son of Isaac, which means chosen, I mean of Abraham, which means chosen, Isaac. And Abraham is the father of a great multitude. So that chosen line goes from Abraham to Isaac, the seed of the promise. <clears throat> well, verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So Yahushai came in the flesh, suffered in the flesh, was tempted in the flesh, walked in the flesh. If he walked as an angel, there would not have been any debate on what his identity was, who he was, what power he had. 
see, wherefore in all things it behoove him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. What people? The children of the promise, the seed of promise. For in that he himself have suffered being tempted. He is able to secure them that are tempted. To secure means to relieve or pro provide aid. So he is a physician to secure, to provide aid or relief. Go back to verse 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Back to Galatians 4, verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. So we are joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, who is Isaac, who is King Solomon. See? So that chosen seed that goes through the house of David is a royal noble bloodline. And the key is the root and offspring of David, which is Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior, who sits on the right hand of the Most High. Go from there. We'll close out here. Go to Acts 3. Right here. Acts 3, verse 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. So this is Shai. Read John chapter 1. Let's go ahead and get it. Who is this talking about? Not Prophet Muhammad. No. John 1, verse 45. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Yehoshai of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Joseph is amongst the royal king bloodline of David, direct lineage descendant of the house of David, or King David's bloodline descendants. So Yehoshai was born of the flesh, by sperm, seed. See, Romans <coughs> 1 and 3. <coughs> Concerning his son, Yehoshai Hamashiach, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So the seed of the promise is of the house of David, the chosen elect of Jacob. Get ready to close out. My voice is totally dry. Acts 3 and 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye fear in all things, whatsoever he shall say unto you. 
and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Those that hate Yahawashai love death. That's in Proverbs chapter 8, towards the bottom. So he is the key to eternal life through repentance and faith in him. And faith is a gift. You either have it or you don't. Verse 24, Acts 3 and 24. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. So the Lord is dealing with Jacob that was scattered into all nations. That's the understanding. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his commandments unto Israel. As for the other nations, he have not known them. He's only dealing with the elect of Israel. So this is a bloodline we're talking about. Yes, the Most High has favorites. Yes, the Most High is racist. For his people, the children of the prophets, the children of the promises, the children of the covenants. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Yahushai, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. <coughs> so Yahweh Shai had to walk on the earth in the flesh to conquer death, to be tempted, to be persecuted, afflicted, and to suffer. So he became that sacrificial lamb for the nation of Israel. That's in our law. Close out here. Galatians 4, verse 3. Even so, we which were children were in bondage under the elements of the world. Remember, we're joint heirs with Yahushai. So he suffered in the flesh. We must likewise suffer in the flesh and be tempted. Let's go to verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. So the law was only given to the nation of Israel, Jacob. That's it, to redeem the Israelites. Now the children of promise are waking up. And this is not man-made. This is a massive spiritual phenomenon. <clears throat> Let's go here. See? Psalms 85, 
verse 4. Turn us, O God, of our salvation. Turn us, O God, of our salvation. And cause thine anger towards us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thine anger to all generations? So that salvation is to Zion, elect of Israel. So this is the generation that's seeking him in these last days. Or six, will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Return, repent, revive, to be quickened, made alive out of the dry bones. Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Who was this written to? Let's go up to verse 1. Psalms 85, verse 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. So the Israelites are being released from bondage. Saved out of captivity. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. So Israel transgressed the laws. Sin is a transgression of the law, which was given to the Israelites. Read verse 4 again. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger towards us to cease. So the Lord is having mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. That's Isaiah chapter 14, the first three verses. I'm not going to read it because my voice is drying out. Let's go to verse 7. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. The nation of Israel, Jacob, elect. And that's happening now. This is the generation that's seeking him. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Bashemr Kwakadash, Barakatham, the seed of the promise. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yesharela, and the Bad Baba. We got next, Lord willing. Shout out one.